Thank you for keeping it why in the morning. My name is Ram Maguko. Hello Monday. Well, today we have a lot in store for you. As I had mentioned earlier, you're just in time for the next conversation of the day. It's all about you and politics, which starts right now. My name is Ram Maguko. If at all you're just joining us, this is why in the morning. Ensure that you engage with us on our social media platforms. The hashtag is why in the morning at Ram Aguko and that Y254 channel. Remember to also engage with us on our Facebook platform. We are live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke On Facebook, head over there, drop in your comment at the comment section. We've made a post there in regards to youth participation. This particular Monday morning, let's talk about politics. And joining me, I am with Maina Karobia. He's a youth leader. Karibu sana, Maina. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we shall also be joined by Emma Mongute. Uh, she is uh, going to join us in the bit in a few, and then we shall dissect matters concerning youth and leadership. Maina. Yes. Uh, Let's get to know about what you do and what you stand for. I'm aware that you have a position somewhere. Okay. You can tell us where that is yes. and uh, a bit of what you do. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ram, for hosting me here. Uh, my name is Maina Karobia. I'm currently serving as the chair of Forum for Progressive Future. It's a youth-led NGO that deals mm -hmm. with issues to do with peace, cohesion, environment conservation, youth mm -hmm. development, and uh, fostering access to quality education. Mm -hmm. Out of that, I am in the National Secretariat of United Democratic Alliance, that is UDA. Mm -hmm. I represent the youth in that secretariat. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting, interesting. We have a, 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 a full package. <laughs> <laughs> my county of residence is Kembo yeah. County. Kembo County. Uh, that's where I pay my tax from. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you for finding time, Maina. Yes. It's a pleasure. Hope you're well. Thank you. Uh, I'm well. You're well. Yes. Uh, let's talk politics now. Um, Jim, Jimmy Wanjiki yes. has urged Honda Borello Dinga to step aside uh -huh. and retire from politics and allow youths yes. to take up the mantle. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? You see, Jimmy Wanjiki is not a youth. That is one thing to talk about him. That uh, he can't be talking. You, you see, there's this approach when we are going to politics when yeah. uh, politicians always present to be the ambassadors of youthful interests or youth interests and they present vague policies and vague uh, uh, aspirations of the youth. Jimmy Wajiki cannot be talking on behalf of the youth yet he has been here for the last I think uh, more than 50 years. Uh, youth mm. matters as that guy from uh, I think Nairobi slums talked about Mm. of mambo ya vijana wachia vijana. Mm. <laughs> I would also tell Wanjigi, yeah. matters youth, yeah. leave it to people below 35 to dissect them and uh, promote them. But Wanjigi, he needs, to, he needs to talk about issues that uh, he has been doing with, he has been dealing with for the last, mm. uh, I think, 30 years. He, he yesterday, he, he called, yesterday he actually acknowledged that he, was, he has been doing business with the government, he has been a commission agent, of uh, tenders within government. Yeah. That should be his strength. That should be what he is doing. He, he just not stick to you. business. Yes, he should stick just, just to business. Yeah. And you see, Wanjigi is presenting himself as the Donald Trump of uh, Kenyan politics. That he can just wake up, being a business uh, business, businessman, he can just wake up and start floating uh, lofty ideas to us as Kenyans. Uh -huh. I think Kenyans are brighter than that. Kenyans know what they want. Mm -hmm. Kenyans want uh, an experienced leader, somebody who knows what is happening in government, and somebody who actually uh, identifies with the needs and challenges of, uh, of Kenyans in daily to day life. He's, he, he said that he wants to vie for presidency. Uh -huh. uh, he's going to challenge uh, Arela Odinga at the nominations yes. of, of, of ODM. Yes. Do you think that he stands a chance? I think uh, in that uh, aspiration, mm. Jimmy Wajigi presents himself as an idealist. We know who caused the sorts in the, ODM. you know, in ODM. Last time we had uh, a youthful wing trying to take over ODM. We saw men in black raining on delegates in Kasarani. <laughs> so I, I think uh, Jimmy Wajigi trying to vie for presidential ticket in ODM, I mm. think he's baiting more than he can chew. And I would, I, I would urge him. Mm. I think initially he, was, he had the idea of having his own political party. I would urge him if, if he still has the, uh, that aspiration of leading this country, he should not bank on ODM support. We know who caused the shots in ODM. 
ODM for the last, or since its inception, there has not been internal democracy. It has been a unilateral uh, form of leadership, even in terms of uh, uh, deter determining or uh, yes, determining even the, me the, the smallest decision mm. in that party. It has to be consulted at the top utterance of, uh, of leadership in that party. So <laughs> I think Jimmy Wanjigi is, idealist is idealistic when he tries to imagine that uh, he can take over ODM from Ray Odinga. Mm. Yes, and it's, let me tell it's you. It's an unrealistic thing. It is unrealistic. Dead on see, arrival. Dead on arrival. You <laughs> see, let me tell you, <laughs> politics is all about uh, controlling a certain constituency of people. Why, why which do you constituency, believe so? Which constituency does Jimmy Wajiki control in this country? In terms of where can we identify his stronghold? At least for Ray Odinga, we can say he is a stronghold in us. There is, he has a certain constituency that he controls or he commands. Mm -hmm. But Jimmy Wajiki is a newbie in terms of uh, elective politics. So mm -hmm. I, I don't find any chance. I don't, I don't see him standing any chance in terms of a uh, presidential ticket with, uh, within ODM. We might actually be. He might actually embarrass himself. Uh, the if, he, if you believe, what if he? What if he actually gets it? It would be shocking. Can't get him. it. Can't get it unless Jai Odinga just wakes up and endorses him without going to the ballot. But if they are going to go to the ballot of ODM, a presidential ticket, uh, my friend, he will be washed away. We've we've seen many youths come up and say that uh, many young, many people, let yes. me say youths, many people have come up and say, and and, and I've said that. They are standing in for the youth. Uh -huh. They are vying for, for, for youthful positions. Yes. Yet many Kenyans have questioned the uh, credibility of them yes. being actually termed as youths. Yes. Jimmy Wanjigi is uh, one person that you are, you, you are mentioning. Yes. Reminds me of many, that many other people who have held positions that are youthful, yes. yet Kenyans feel as though they are not youthful. Yes. But they are getting endorsed. They are getting support. They're getting uh, uh, votes, yes. even though they don't win. Yes. Actually, even if they don't win, yes. there are some votes that they get. This, isn't that a sign that there is some, some, some problem somewhere? You see, the challenge of our democracy is that uh, since the dispensation of multi party in 1992, our politics tends to be more commercialized. And you find that uh, politicians take advantage of uh, the challenges uh, the livelihood challenges that Kenyans get in our country. So uh, they take advantage of this, commercialize politics, make sure that uh, as many challenged, economically challenged youth follow them for handouts. But I can tell you that uh, from 2022, we are going to have a new dispensation. Mm -hmm. We are going to deal with the economic challenges and economic uh, aspirations of our country. And I, I have been seen by virtue of my position within a political party, I've mm -hmm. been seeing very many youth present themselves for leadership, mm. and I hope they are not going to be assimilated mm. uh, in the current uh, market politics that we find in our country. I can tell you, if we are, we are going to be sub, uh, supporting people who, are, uh, who, who, who claim to be supporting youth interests, mm. let us look at their track record. Mm. For the first time, mm. I, uh, I hope in 2022, Kenyans are going to be rational enough and vote people, not just because of their promises, uh -huh. but vote them because of their, their track record, vote them because of their history, uh, based on the economics. But that's the problem the of, of, of the Kenyan youth. Do they country. do that? Those, those are things we, we, we like saying. I can tell you, mouth, I can tell you, I can tell you the conversation has changed, uh, uh -huh. my brother Ram. If you follow it, if you follow the journey of BBI uh -huh. and the handshake, people have taken their stakes high they are demanding more for their leaders. If you are not going to follow into the economic conversation that Kenyans are demanding, uh -huh. my friend, you are going to be irrelevant. Mm. And that's why you find BBI, because it was a political pet project of two people, it got its struggles in terms of uh, legitimacy with the people. Mm. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Make sure that you tell, tell us what you think about it. The hashtag is all in the morning. Jimmy Wanjiki challenges Royal Odinga to retire from politics, saying that youths need to pick up the mantle and he is uh, going to challenge uh, honorable Odinga at the nominations for uh, the presidential nominations in odm does he stand a chance Maina karuga says that it is dead on arrival what do you think about that 
at Ram Aguko and at Y254 channel engage with us. You know, I, I mentioned earlier on that we shall be joined by Emma Mongute, uh, uh, who is also a youth leader. She shall tell us more about herself. Emma is also joining me in studio. Thank you. Thank oh. you so much, Ram. Niko Salama. Niko Salama, and thank you for having for, me. Niko uh, <laughs> Salama. It is Corona. Dynamics in Nairobi. <laughs> uh, I, I always blame everything Corona. For, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell us a, a, a bit about yourself. Um, so that we can get, uh, and also tell us what you do, um, you know, um, in Kenya today. Um, so I am the founder of Amandla Mek Foundation. I'm also a human rights um, champion, and yeah, um, mm. political leader in waiting. In waiting. Mm. Are you going to? <laughs> Let's share? not get into that. Let's not get into that. <laughs> not now. Uh, yeah. So uh, thank you so much for 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 for, for coming. Um, tell mm -hmm. us what you think about it. You've uh, you've been here. You've heard what uh, Mina said mm -hmm. about uh, you know youths in leadership. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this? Is it that is it the right time for youths to pick up the mantle? And do they always make the right choices? He's saying that the uh, you know political landscape has changed and it is changing and mine i mentioned you I, I, I you said that uh, youths are going to make better decisions voting for people who have the right ideologies yes. and the right manifestos okay. do you agree with that okay so first of all i'd like to start by saying that we should not be having this discussion in 2021 that it's it's long overdue that we should have youth i mean if we are looking at inclusivity we are looking at having youth on the table women also holding leadership positions we cannot have the select few dominate mm -hmm. and just because somebody has been in politics for long doesn't make them um agree just give makes them experienced but then when we have different energy coming in and when we have youth represented then we have youth for youth because we understand the problems of youth we cannot have people who are not youth representing youth and he he also said that bbi is a, was a pet project i beg to differ bbi was a good document the only thing it was nullified under the um, procedure under procedure, um, the, it did not follow procedure, and also mm. because they were saying that it was, it it is supposed to be a pop, uh, popular vote. Then people, majority of people, were not, you know, for it. And um, he has to. Uh, I'm also um, differing with my colleague here on um, that th that people people's mindsets have changed. Um, that is yeah. not entirely true. Why, why do you believe so? Um, because let's look at uh, politics of Kenya. Mm. Who is the uh, who are the majority voters? You the get youths. Are, are they are the youth and the people in Mashinani? Wondi mm. kumi kupiga Are they enlightened? Has their mindset changed? Have they moved from uh, the mindset of tribalism? Have they moved away from the conversation of gender? I mean, now we have women trying to fight twice as harder to get into political spaces. Mm. Um, so to to give blanket statements like that is wrong. And al to also say that what uh, the, the people who are vouching for BBI had something to gain is the wrong way to look at it. Mm. And as long as we have conversations along that line, then we are losing it. Because BBI was a good document. The only problem is the procedure the was procedure. not followed. So you, you, you have, you're doing the right thing in the wrong manner. In the wrong way, yes. And now if they go to, to court again and they follow the right procedure, because uh, the document itself was not... Uh, was not um, how do I say, attacked for lack of a better word, mm. it was just the procedure uh, they followed. And this is what we we need to, you know, move away from talking about people fa uh, people who are doing well by the country, a and then we think that they're trying to further their own agenda. Will you ask that, is it the right time uh, for you to be in governance? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to, 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 to respond to what she said, but you, you, you had also mentioned the same thing earlier on. You said that someone below 35 yes. is uh, uh, someone who, is, who has a local standard to be able to uh, have a conversation or put up proposals that who should take up leadership in youth. Yes. You mentioned that those are the people who are, should be involved in this particular conversation. Yes. Is, you've also mentioned the same, same thing 
alluded to the fact that there is an ex some, a factor called experience. Yes. Now, the youths have one problem. Yes. We have, we, yes, we have the time, but the experience is what some of us lack. Yes. Is that also a factor? And uh, also, you, your rejoinder to what she said in regards to youths changing their mindset. You see, Ram, today we are talking about youth. For the longest time, for or for the first time, we yeah. are hearing politicians uh, who, are, who have aspiration for presidency, making you this part of their main conversation. I've had uh, His Excellency William Ruto have a whole conversation about youth. In fact, uh, when he made his last press conference, he talked in great length about youth. Mm. Jimmy Wanjiki, as you are alluding to, mm. yesterday he was talking about youth. Rayo Odinga has been talking about youth. Everyone is talking about youth. Everybody youth. is talking about uh, youth. Hustler, the that hustlers are the youths. That actually, hustlers are youth. Actually, that validates my, uh, my submission that, or my suggestion that, or my position that the conversation has changed. Youths are demanding more. Mm. Youths are the center of conversation. And we have made ourselves to be at the center of a conversation by actually telling true to power that this document that you are presenting to us has nothing to us, for us. If, like today, if the, if the BBI, if I was to talk about it, mm. uh, though it is not something that I should be talking about, it is a past document by virtue of the judgment of so it's, Court of it's, Appeal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Should today not we are, be... <laughs> now we are you, should have, you should not have that conversation. In fact, we shouldn't have any conversation about it. But let me say this, uh, Ram. The youth are at the center of the conversation. The okay. leading presidential candidates are talking about youth. They are presenting their, 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 their interests, uh, their manifestos about the youth. So that tells you, if we consolidate the youth base, if we consolidate the youth vote, because they are the majority uh, registered voters according to the ABC records, mm. we can determine who is going to be the president of this country. Now we've and seen for the first time, let me tell you, last week I had a, a stakeholders meeting uh, with youth leaders and youth serving organizations. And our deliberation was that we are going to make youth to be a voting block in this country. In advanced democracies, youth are considered to be a voting block. But in this country, women are the only voting block that we have in terms of the demographics. So for the first time in 2022, we are going to make the youth to be a voting block. We are going to be the determining factor of who becomes the next president in this country. We've seen, we, we have, it's, it's not like we don't. We have youth leaders. We have the young Parliamentarians Association. Yes. It exists. Yes, it exists. Youths. In fact, it was <laughs> in that stakeholders meeting, they had a representative. Ah. Uh, yes. From YPA? Yes, KYPA. Uh, uh. The CEO of Bluma is my good friend. Uh. Let me tell you this, uh, Ram. The challenge we have when we go into the political space is that uh, these young politicians, when they're elected for the first time, mm. they are inducted. Uh huh. Or any leadership, even when you get into public service, you are told to go to a two weeks induction. And it is during that induction mm. that people are shifted from their focus. So like, so that's exactly what I said in the morning. I don't know if you heard me say that. Um, it's so easy to talk about something when you're on the outside. Yes. But when you get in, you get conform to a different pattern. This so two weeks is, induction. Is this thing that what we've been, is, isn't this the same thing that we've been seeing yes. for so many years? Yes. Youths getting into parliament, yes. into leadership, and changing the narrative. Yes. They used to vie for something, yes. they used to stand in for something, yes. but when they, they get into positions, yes. whatever they stood in, yes. uh, they was, whatever they stood for, yes. is the opposite of whatever can they, I, are, they, 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 they get into. It. Let me build into that before my good friend uh. Uh, gets in. Uh, we have seen youthful leadership come on board. We have seen people who have actually, uh, youth leaders or youthful leaders who have actually uh, done what they promised in terms of uh, being the voice of, uh, of alternative voice of leadership, speaking true to power. Look at how our party, uh, our former party Jubilee mm -hmm. is behaving. We have seen youthful leadership, like uh, the leadership of Dede Nyoro, the leadership of Rongo Kangata, the leadership of Kemani Ishungwa, mm -hmm. people who are young, but they have not, or they have lived to the, to, they, they have lived to the, to, the, to the promises that they gave that when we get into power, we are going to present an alternative voice, we are going to, uh, to present an alternative type of leadership. And let me tell you, the greatest challenge that youth leadership or youth, when they get into power, make is that you get into power and you're expected 
to tow the party line. You are expected to tow what the top leadership is telling you to do. But I can tell you, at least I have seen it in Jubilee, there, were, there was a change in 2017. Youth, youthful leaders who got into power, they actually lived to the promise of being the alternative voice and they will be talking true to power and we have seen it. And that's why you have been getting high octane politics uh, from 2017 to date where youthful leadership have actually been telling top powers that this is not how we are going to do it. But you see, at the end of the day, as, 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 as I come to you, at, at the end of the day, every political party yes. has their rules, yes. their laws yes. that they stand for, yes. that every member of that particular party should follow. Yes. Okay. Are you saying that youths ought not to follow these rules of the party? But if those... Let, let, but me, if let me come to Emma. <laughs> let, let me come back. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming to you. Yes. Maina, let me, let me shed some light um, to what you were saying. Uh, to say that we have youth, what Ram was asking, why do we have youth who are, you know, chosen to represent people and then they deviate? Yes. Now, what we need to understand is we need, lead to, we need to elect people, not because they are youth, yes. not because they are women, yeah. uh, yeah. but because they, have uh, they, they are ready to learn experience notwithstanding they stand for something they have passion and they are people of integrity then we will not be having this issue of doing uh, another person's bidding because when you are given um, the leadership docket yes. there are people who you are going to represent and you're not going there to do another person's bidding but then you are you are tied to serving your people and i agree with you that youth are the majority uh, voters and also women but then when we hear our leaders um talk about youth 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 the question is why that's that's what we need to ask ourselves and instead of focusing on problem problem what is the solution now uh, let me just shed some light on why they keep focusing more on youth. They keep focusing more on youth because they know they have the time, they are passionate, and these are young people with aspirations. They tap into that. It is, it, you know, politics is a game of manipulation and power. And they have the numbers. And they have the numbers. And that's why they are, it, it's vested interest and the promise of, uh, you know, a bright future for these youth. And and they are passionate also about, you know, and look at majority of youth. They're the ones using social media, social media uh, to further um, conversations and stuff like that. So the, the reason they are referring to youth, youth, youth is not because they, they really care. I, I'm, I'm not like, speaking. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, let me put it this way. So then I'm not misquoted. <laughs> um, for anyone to want to have somebody, and, and especially in politics, around them, there's something they are getting from them. And now that is what I'm shedding light on. The reason they are, you know, referring to youth, youth more is because they are the majority, they have time, and somehow they are going to use them as foot soldiers. I mean, we've seen this happening. We've seen people having women sing uh, in political rallies and women um, open uh, stage for them. But then now look at when it comes to the circle of leadership, they're not there. When it's the decision-making table, they're not there. <laughs> so <laughs> it is true. Yeah. It, it, is time, it is time that we understood that as much as we want to fight for youth and vouch for our, our, um, you know, our voices to be heard, it's also important that we also ask for stake at the table. Because otherwise, then we'll be doing other people's bidding. Uh, Maina mentioned earlier that uh, someone like Jimmy Wanjigi ought not to stand in to claim that he represents the youth. Do you subscribe to the same? You, if I got you right. Yes, yes, yes. If that's what you said. Yes. Do you believe so? Um, yes. And the question is, why <laughs> Why is he... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not... I'm a yes. Let me uh, tell you. Uh, she is uh, a fellow youth. She, she knows yes. that our voice... Can best be interested, can best be expressed then by what I was, and me. Maina, what I'm trying to say is yes. let's get youth in leadership positions, yes. youth, youthful people who yes. have integrity, who are passionate, yes. and who are going to live by the manifesto yes. they pledge. Yes. Yes. They lack experience. No, experience is a bottleneck. You learn, you learn. We have had people, I mean, <laughs> Ram, look at it this way. When you finish campus and get into the job market, mm. how experienced are you? Zero. 
but are you but, but, do but, you grow but, in your job yet they want someone who with two years experience <laughs> <laughs> then let's have people yeah. nurturing the youth and let's stop let's look for solutions and let, let's not focus on problems because mm. the minute we focus more on problems we are creating more problems when we look at solutions then we look at how to curb this because then that what happens is 10 years from now we'll still be having the same conversation for the sake of conversation I want us to touch on yet another thing here. Uh, Let me add something. Oh, you, you have a rejoined? Uh, yes, I have a rejoined. Okay, yes. Uh, I have something to add value to uh -huh. what my sister is talking about. Let me tell you, Ram, mm. this thing that you call experience mm. is a bottleneck. It's actually one of the hindrances of uh, youth people or youth population getting into power. Mm. I think for me, as our country, when we have the largest component of our po population being youth, we shouldn't be, be talking about uh, experience has been a factor, a determining factor of people joining uh, or being considered for any opportunity. It, 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 for me, the only correct? determining factor that should be checked, mm. Ram, is the values that she was talking about. Integrity, transparency, uh, the skills, the necessary skills, the, cap the capacity, the personal, the personal character. If we get into to look at those values or those qualities mm. and shed away this determining factor of uh, experience, then we are going to get uh, the right leadership in our country. I believe in the youth population. I believe youth have the capacity uh, and the necessary character uh, to mm. deliver on what is expected in any institution. Okay. Yeah, yes. uh, and I agree with Maina because furthering such narratives is using those narratives to deny yes. people a chance. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, and we also need to hold our leaders accountable to their word and to what they say they will deliver. Because uh, we've we've seen in the country that people will come and say, "Oh, I will do this. I will do this if you elect me." But then um, the minute they're in power, then they do away with people who are in the system. They bring in their people. You get, mm -hmm. and no one, and no one does anything, and, and that is what we are used to uh, uh, to to seeing happen. Be, be, and be, and this needs I move to, to change. Before the next thing, that, yes, that's this exact thing that I, I've been asking over and over again. What is happening with the youth? They, for example, the KOP, you, you had a meeting with them yes. l last week. Yes. There are many Kenyans who feel as though the youths who are in power yes. are not actually representing them. Yes. But they are failing in their mandate to represent the youths mm -hmm. as they are in leadership. Some yes. are senators, some are governors, some are holding different positions in different capacities. Yes. What is the problem here? You see, uh, the reason I say there is that feeling, Ram, is because there is a, a certain percentage of youth who when they see leaders, they only expect handouts from them. They don't demand uh, right policies from them. They don't uh -huh. demand right registrations from these leaders. And we also are, leaders. We are going for second best. Uh, we are, is it that we we are going for the like? Oh, uh, the quick quick benefits. Yeah. We are going for the quick benefits. When I look at a leader, or when I meet a leader personally, I always ask him, "What are you doing for the youth in terms of policy registration and in terms of policy making?" So uh, I think uh, our leaders also fear in terms of engaging the youth because with that expectation, that commercial expectation or economic expectation, then it means they are, and they have maybe little resources at their disposal, then it means they, are, they, will, be, they, will, get into, they will dig deep into their pockets. But okay. let me say this, when we engage in a honest or a direct conversation in regards to economic uh, prospects of our country, I, I think we are shifting uh, from the politics for power's sake. And I, tell, I can tell you, if we continue sustaining this economic conversation, the bottom-up economic model, the trickle-down uh, versus the trickle-down conversation, mm. uh, trickle-down economics model, then I can tell you, youths are going to find their way into those conversations. And you are going to find them, because of the creativity, the energy, and the education that youth have gotten in, uh, over the years, you are going to find new conversation build, build up along these models. Uh, and I uh, can tell you, if uh, we have a honest conversation along the economic prospects, mm. uh, there you are going to find youth being, uh, youth being at the center of this conversation. Because it means that any, any model, if any model succeeds or is voted in in 2022, be it uh, bottom-up economic model or trickle-down economic model, then it means that uh, it is going to affect 
how they are going to, trans uh, to, 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 to transact their businesses and the economic affairs uh, post-2022. Well, 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 one day I'll, I'll host him to talk about the, that economic uh, yeah. <laughs> the bottom <laughs> up, the top bottom. <laughs> yes, why don't we sustain uh, that conversation? Yeah, we will. I'll, I'll, you see, let me tell you, Ram, uh, uh. as media, you have a moral responsibility to shift the conversation from the politics. For the longest time we have been, and this is where I agree with Mukisa Kitui that for the, longest time, for the longest time politics have been serving economics. It is time that economics serve politics. Let us talk about economics, economics, economics. Okay. Let us, even when we come into these shows, uh, let us delve too much into the economics rather than the politics of the, of the day. Okay. Maina, Maina, to say that the media um, have a role to play, yes. that is true. But then we owe it to ourselves as well to do our due diligence yes. and to also do what is right uh, for us by informing ourselves and making right decisions. And when we talk about youth be not being represented, he, Ram talked about having you know senators who are youthful but then they also have a mandate to do. Yes. You, you get, a, like a youth MP has a whole mandate, uh, you know, things he's supposed to deliver to his people. Instead, the solution here would be, let's have each ministry have a youth docket and, the, and um, break down what representation of youth looks like. You get, because then to want every youthful leader to represent the youth, mm. what does that look like? Do, I, I believe that... Uh, you day we have uh, youth representation. You see, yes, you, yes. You, you In fact, it. let me tell you, just, uh, just give me this opportunity to talk about <laughs> it. Right from the gate, uh, right from the gate. Which gate? The UDA yes. gate. Okay. <laughs> to, the, to the last, to the, to the, to the senior most uh, position within UDA, mm. we have an 85% youthful. Uh, youth holding right. positions. I want us to move to, to, to yet another thing. Now, because of the BBI, yes. Um, we are looking at a scenario where many leaders who wanted to regain or get or sustain themselves yes. in politics or leadership, because of the annulment of, uh, you know, because of what, what happened at the Court of Appeal, some may need to reconsider their positions. Some may need to re-strategize for 2022. Yes. For example, the second term governors. Yes. What are they going to do now? It, it, it was also on the uh, headlines today. I read it, and the question on the headlines of the People Daily today was, which way? Second term governors who embrace the law of the BBI uh, with the hope of landing jobs in the proposed expanded cabinet are now to go back to the drawing board and re-strategize what is the way forward for such governors. Some are expecting to, to become CSS. The others who may opt for senators, I don't know, yes. for the Senate seat. <laughs> <laughs> but now, still, in conjunction with also how youth are also uh, p playing in. But now, the BBI has brought in a big wave in politics. People need to re-strategize. Your thoughts, Karobia? You see, uh, Ram, politics is like a game. You have to have plan A and plan B. <laughs> These governors, second time governors, they also have their plans. They have their plan Bs. Uh, uh, they had uh, their plan B's even with the BBI. They knew if it failed, this is our next option. And that's why you find there were second term governors, even, even during the BBI conversation, they were talking of, I'm going to defend my, I'm going, I'm going to go for the Senate seat, I'm going for the MP seat. Mm. Like I had uh, the senator, the, the governor of uh, Busia, Ojamong, mm. saying that he is going to vie for a certain uh, MP seat. MP, I've also that? had. The, 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 the governor of Kakamega, mm. I've had the governor of Muranga talk of vying for presidency. For Kakamega governor, he said that he was going to vie for presidency, but he, he dropped yes. uh, in favor of uh, Raila Odinga. Yes. But we have presidency uh, being vied for governor Mutua. Yes, Alfred governor Mutua, Mutua governor Iria, they are yes. vying for presidency. Mm. These governors, they have their plan B, even without the BBI. Uh, and I would say this, that uh, the youth need to uh, present themselves. This is actually a vacancy. Uh, for the, from the second term governors. Mm. The youth need to present themselves for these positions. We have a youthful leader uh, being a governor in uh, Governor uh, Stephen Sang for Nandi. Mm. Uh, and we have other governors who, are, who we consider to be youth or uh, in terms of their age and in terms of their uh, style of leadership is youth friendly. And uh, I think uh, youth need to step up 
present themselves for elective politics in 2022 mm -hmm. and should not actually restrict them for the MCA seat. They should go even for the governor, for executive seats, like governor and MP <laughs> seats. So, and uh, we shouldn't limit ourselves. You know, it's interesting, Maina, that, you, that you're saying someone yes. like Jimmy Wanjigi ought not to be considered as a youth, yet you have governors who are his age. Yes. And uh, you'd still rec uh, say that they are still uh, representing the youth. I don't consider a governor who is above 35 or even above 40. Let me keep it. Keep it at Many 40. of these governors are above 35, brother. Yes, but at least for some, I would consider for some, when he got into elective politics uh, as a senator mm. initially, he was actually below 35. I think he was even 32 years. So let me say this, that uh, to be a youth also, mm. it is not just about uh, age. It's all about so, even, it's about the mentality and in terms of how uh, your perception according to, uh, to the youth population. So because you're, for you're, me, Jimmy Wanjigi, by all factors, apart from age, even in terms of how he was behaving mm. before he presented himself for presidential uh, ticket in ODM, I didn't hear him talk about youth. He was just talking about the political players, the senior political players, who rule this, Raila this, root or that. <laughs> Let me come to you, uh, Emma. But it's, it's interesting how you've changed. You're saying, yes. initially you're, you're like, the age is a factor. Now you're saying it's not about the age, it's about the ideology. No, it's, it's about age and it's about the ideology. Ah, uh, mine, uh, Emma. Yes. Um, so, yes, by the BBI not passing, of course, things have changed. And, of course, now people need to go back to the drawing board and re-strategize. Mm. However, I will loosely state that for the BBI not passing, that, that, that was something that, you know, we all saw coming. Mm -hmm. We were just hopeful that <laughs> it will pass, but then we also um, it coming it's because like, uh, of, of how the process was being, you know, carried out. Mm. And so now it's... It's, um, it's the mandate of leaders because Maina says that we need to have more youth stepping up. We have had youth stepping up for years. I mean, are they given a chance? The, the thing here should be then that uh, we should have the people holding leadership positions give chances to youth. Having yeah. parties give party tickets to youth. And I agree with Maina when he says that we should not reserve MCA uh, you know, uh, positions only <laughs> you know, for the youth who are just coming into politics. We should have systems where youth are nurtured. And as they are nurtured, then we place them in a position where they are able to take up leadership and not just the M on MCA levels, but, you know, to whatever um, heights they, they would like to represent people. And now this is a call to our leaders because, you know, those people who are vouching for BBI were uh, talking about inclusivity more and change of governance structure. However, now they have a chance because even in the current constitution of Kenya, we have that docket of inclusivity. How about then we have our leaders now try and find a way of including more women and more youth into, uh, you know, political space. Let's, let's not um, wait for a law to be passed because we've seen people, you know, not respect the rule of law. We've, we've seen uh, people being high handed and people not respecting the constitution and nothing is done. And so for people to say that this law has to be passed and this has to happen for one two three to happen is the wrong way to go because even you as a youth when you're trying to get in the, into the political space people will ask you what have you done for your people before you, you you join us what have you done for the people and we should also be asking our leaders the same question what have you done before you further um, this agenda of we have to have uh, the constitution changing and policy being amended what have we done because our constitution is inclusive but then we have people who are defying rule of law and furthering their own agenda and yes as the BBI has uh, you know fallen now people have to re-strategize but then I know politics is a, is a game of it's very dynamic and to I, look I, I like calling it Game of Thrones mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and to you know yeah. to have a fixed mindset and especially in life doesn't get anyone far so yeah it, it has fallen people have to re-strategize but then as they are re-strategizing could we have and can we see our leaders do better but now you still um, both of you are mentioning one common factor that we should just focus that the youths uh, we should go for the MC, uh, MCA positions, but also other positions. Yeah. Now, look at the current political um, structure. We have youths who are members of parliament. Yes. 
We have a parliament. We have youth who are members of parliament. We have youths who are senators. Yes. They are holding positions across the board. The youths hold positions currently as MCAs, MPs, senators, and governors yes. for some. Yes. The composition is still there. Youths are still there. Yes. And as we talk, we have youth leaders in almost every political party, yes. including UDA. Yes. So doesn't that nullify your point that the youth are being, uh, you know, pushed towards particular positions? Emma? Uh, so um, the youth are not being pushed. However, we are not having more youth represented because it, it's like, <laughs> let, let me use an analogy of Pilau in Kenya. You're being given pilau, you expect it to be a mixture of rice and meat. Yeah. But then you get like in a bowl, a very big bowl of rice, there are only three pieces of meat or five. And then we keep counting. Oh, see, there's that one piece of meat, there's the second one, there's the third one. So as much as we have youth representative in different spaces, oh, they it, are scattered. It's insufficient. It is. It is we, we don't have enough youth um, rep represented. And also, let's have each ministry, as I had stated Ali, have a youth docket. Because it's, it's time then we will have more youth represented in each ministry and then we will have more youth in governance spaces. What are your thoughts in regards to these governors who are in their second term? Should, just, uh, should they just retire? Why don't you ban Wakai? Once you get, let me tell you, Nani Ram, before Emma joins in. Once you taste power, it's very hard to, to live. To live. Let me tell you, for, in fact, the, if you look at the lifestyle of the governors who are not elected in 2017, you find them actually, you find th there is some difference. You mm. find them actually desiring more power in 2022. Look at the, how Kabogo is coming in. Look at other <laughs> governors. Kabogo is coming back again? Yeah, he's trying to buy. So the point is that uh, these governors, they have their plan B. Yeah. They have their interest, and when once they have been elected, once they have been in this executive position, they can tell. In fact, they better vie for an MCA seat, but they continue being in power. They they can go for MCA. <laughs> they better. I'm saying. They, I, I'm trying to move it at the lowest level. They better go to the lowest uh, elective uh, seat uh, uh, in our governance structure uh, uh, uh. than be an ordinary Kenyan. Uh, walking around the, uh, all the as streets. long as they have some position. There. As long as they have a position of. Power. So you feel like it would be difficult for them to leave power for it these? Is, it would be very difficult. And th let me tell you, the reason as why it, they feel dif there's that difficulty is because for us as Kenyans, we have made elected leaders to be like demigods or to be like politics, uh, political leadership is like a position of privilege. We mm. need to look at politics from the point of uh, servant, uh, servant, uh, servanthood or look at it from the point of getting political leaders being people who are serving us servant leadership servant leadership wow. rather than mm -hmm. just the po position of privilege and position of power mm. or, or control i think that's why you find politicians will go to the to the to the lowest bit to ensure that they are con they, they will continue sustaining uh, power or being in position of privilege mm. rather than serving people let me say this as we continue as mm. we head to 2022 mm. For the youth, we need to move the conversation a notch higher. We need to move the conversation, not uh, from the politics that we have currently, yeah. but to the uh, to the conversation of how are we going to improve our economy? How are we going to have job creation? How are we going to have affordable health care? How are we going to have quality education? That is the kind of conversation as youth we need to put uh, to our leaders on the table so that they can present good manifestos, so that we can hold them accountable uh, post-2022. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maina, Maina, when you say that, you know, once a person, a leader tests power, uh, it, it's not easy for them to let go. That in Africa, like, in Africa. I mean, <laughs> when you state it like you're, that, you're yeah, yeah, it's Africa. okay, yes. I agree. I mean, because we're talking about Kenyan politics as well. Yeah. Um, I agree, and I hear, no, not that I agree, but I hear you. Yes. The question I'm asking is, are you okay with it? Because when you state things like this, this is still focusing on the problem. We, we are not focusing the, on the, the solution. Mine, the wait, wait, <laughs> wait, just hear me out first. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, that uh -huh. is a greedy way of, you know, looking at, th okay, that's a greedy uh, stance 
from our leaders yes. and it's also it's it's not right for us to look at it and say oh once they've said tested about power it's hard you know to live because mine look at it this way it's not about our leaders yes. and the leadership positions they hold they hold to serve people and i like that you stated that you know we need to have leaders who are servant leaders in terms of they deliver their mand what they are mandated to do to the people and their mandate is to serve people. So what is the solution? The solution here is let our leaders understand that it's not about them. It's about people representation. Power does not start and stop with them. And this is a cycle. It needs to continue. We cannot, having, we cannot be having the same people in the same places, doing the same things, and then we expect different things. So let's hold our leaders in, uh, accountable. And also let's vouch for and push for you know, once you have led and you have not, it's not about Tamram, because you mm. ask um, uh, these, these people, um, the governors who have held uh, their second term, should they go home, should they remain? It's not about term. I mean, with the first term, if they have not fulfilled their mandate, those people need to go. That's how we should be looking at the politics of the country. They should go. It's not about how long they serve. It's about the quality, not quantity. And so if we hold the people um, uh, accountable in terms of have they delivered their mandate, do we need to have you back because of the things you have started, done and not done, and because of what you are promising your people? Or do, are we having you back because you hold the position of power and it's very hard to let go of power? And so because we are yes, yes, people, let's sit here and vote you in once again until you finish your term. That's the mm. wrong way to look at mm. it. And that's mm. why I keep mm. saying solutions. Because until, uh, until we start looking at solutions and until we start changing these narratives to solutions, then we are just troubleshooting. It doesn't help. Uh, we're moving around the same, same yeah, mountain. Yeah. And, and then we are letting the oppressors win and us assuming the victim mentality. And that has never got us anywhere. As a people, it has never got us anywhere. And let me tell you, when you are in a position of power and you are leading an ignorant majority, mm. I'm using ignorant <laughs> loosely. Because look at <laughs> the, 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 the BBI uh, process. It's, it's not, it's supposed to... If the BBI was to pass, it was supposed to come from the people. But then did the people know this? No. But the, did our leaders continue to do things that were not right? Yes. Well, did anyone question? No. And, and, and that is the Kenya we live in. And that is the problem. And that is where our leaders thrive. Thrive at oppressing us. Because first of all, we don't know our rights. Secondly, we are a yes, yes people. We, we choose to keep quiet more. We choose to sit, to look at things. And instead of uh, analyzing things and questioning and saying no this is wrong you get we are there saying it's okay you are our leader you see better let's you get and w which is wrong which is wrong ram uh, i'm saying you you're pondering about what is she said <laughs> <laughs> no let me tell you there are people who have been doing things <laughs> the reason as to why bbi failed is because people went to court what is what is the stand of uh, uh uda no, I can't be speak on behalf of UDA. There is a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. I can just talk on general politics and how UDA is planning to do things. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. No problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, if you are looking at, because you are the chairman of... Um, Forum for Progressive Future. Forum for Progressive Future. Yes. There are some aspects that she has mentioned. Yes. That I believe follow under the mandate yes. of the Forum for Progressive Future. Yes that the things that you're you, 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 you're trying to fight for yes, yes. and the things that you're standing in for yes you know if you look at that because you've been on the ground yes and you've seen how people relate on the ground yes. as they are trying to uh, fight for the thing that they stand for yes do people on the ground understand what's going on do they understand their own rights? Yes. Do they understand the political ramifications of all these things concerning the BBI, yes. those who are in power, and those who are going to vie yes. for 2022? We are seeing so many people coming in to vie for presidential election, even this singer, yes. uh, Ruben Kigame, is yes. also vying yes. for presidential election. People are trying to change the narrative. Yes. Your thoughts on that? Let me tell you, Ram, we have an educated mass. Let me tell you, there are she, people... She begs to differ that. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, Kenyans, ordinary Kenyans know things, how they are happening. They have radios, they have TVs, they, have, they are on social media, so they know what is happening. Kenyans know? 
they know. The only thing that you can tell them, or the only thing I, I think they are not aware of, is the consciousness of their rights and the power that they hold. But let me tell you, they know daily activities, the political activities that are taking place in our country. And they know when you are doing the right thing and when you are not doing the right thing. And for instance, and if you want to know that Kenyans know what is happening, look at the rallies that were taking place of the yeah. BBI, or yeah. even the, the political rallies that take place in our country. Kenyans have read the BBI, they know about the BBI. They know, they know about it, and they can read hypocrisy in any conversation that is brought up. And this is how I will tell you, or how I can, I can show you that indeed that they know what is happening. Yeah. <coughs> Today, I will tell you, like for instance, the conversation ar around bottom up. An ordinary Kenyan knows that the bottom up is about uh, the affairs of the person at the ordinary, uh, at, the, at the lowest level of the pyramid. Even more, and he, uh, an ordinary Kenyan can explain the bottom up economic model more than even an, eli uh, an elite. Why? The bottom up or the conversation, the political conversation around bottom up or even the trickle down. They will know that the trickle down is more of resources coming from the top, flowing the downwards. Bottom. And the bottom up is about generally starting the investments or starting the, the government priorities at the lowest level of the pyramid going up. And that is the kind of conversation that is going on on the ground. And let me tell you, for me, I interact with people on a daily basis at the ground. And they know what is happening. They know who is doing the bottom up. They know who is doing the trickle down. They know who is doing the BBI. They know who is doing, who is opposing it or who is finding an alternative uh, way of, uh, of improving the document. So let me tell you, Kenyans, by virtue of their access to information through media, radio stations and social media, they know what is happening. You can't just come and tell Kenyans that, you know, so-and-so is saying this, and indeed, or uh, contrary, the person is not saying it. Kenyans are going to tell you to, the, to, to your face that, no, you're lying to us. The person you are, you are trying to oppose is actually promoting this other ideology. So let me tell you, in 2022, politicians better be careful. So we should not just, they are dealing we, we don't fake ignorance. We don't, let's not think that people can be, can be duped into the people, ideologies. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Politicians should be very careful. 2022, we have an enlightened mass. mass. We have uh, a mass that is actually demanding more uh, from, their, from their leaders. And let me tell you, there's something in political science that is called Overton, uh, Overton Window. Uh. Citizens have set an overton window, window for the leaders, and the overton window is across or is in a, in the economic conversation. So a leader who is going to talk about tribal outfits and tribal and position uh, share, power sharing in 2022, he might find himself or herself outside the overton window, and that's why you are going to find mm. people being uh, thrown out of out of the political space and having a large turnover in mm. 2022. I want us to wrap this conversation up. Uh, throughout the whole time that he was talking, you are, you are shaking your yeah. head, shaking your head thoroughly, yeah. thoroughly. I <laughs> she, mean. She, she seems to say that our, our mass is Mina, don't ignorant. speak for me. Let me speak for myself. Let me speak for myself. She, no, no, he no, is no, interpreting no. what you are saying. Uh, interpreting, yes. Yes, but by body language. Don't, don't speak oh, for me. I wanted you to interpret <laughs> the, the start of you. I wanted you to really interpret the start of you. Okay. So, but Ram, re you respond to, to yeah, it. I want us to wrap up. Yes? Yeah, you asked, are people trying to change the narrative? That, uh. That's what you asked, Ram. Maina, you have missed the point spectacularly. Yes, and I will say that loosely. Yes. Let me explain why. Mm -hmm. I have been on the ground. Mm -hmm. I run a foundation and I work with people on the ground. Let me tell you, we have people who are not enlightened. We have literacy levels in Kenya are so low. It, 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 it is alarming. I mean, when you move from Nairobi to the ground, the, the, the kind of people you meet there are not educated. You tell them things and they're in shock and you're wondering, are we in the same country? You understand? Now, when you say we have radios and we have, um, you know, televisions and people know what is happening, question is, are we being told the right things in these radios? Are we being told uh, the right things in these televisions? Are people trying to further their agendas? I mean, we have propaganda selling like hot cake. You, you understand? It doesn't make it true, but then look at how um, a steamy um, gossip story just runs. People, people love good ideas. People love gossip. People, does it make it right? No. Does it make them informed? No. Then it makes them misinformed. Um, now, 
I have been on the ground. People don't know their rights. People do not understand their rights. People do not know the political implication or the implication of having a leader who does not serve their need or who is not there to, to give back to the people and actually fulfill his mandate. People don't understand the importance of good leadership. And let me tell you why. Look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. People are trying to put food on the table. The, the majority few who Maina is talking about, who would know? Who would care? Who will do well by themselves and the, by the people? They are too busy running their lives. They will, even if you call for a rally, a rally today, or let's say for um, a movement or trying to do some kind of demonstration, they will not be available. But while they were ground, will come. Why will they come? Because of the 50 bob they will get be getting. Because of the 100 bob they will be getting. And mm -hmm. people subscribe to very good ideologies, things that make them feel good. And when you state minor that Mwanainchi uh, will speak uh, better about bottom-up economy than an elite, there is a problem. That is a big problem because what is happening is their mindsets have been conditioned. Their mindsets have been conditioned to think this is a good thing, this is a, a thing that is going to work for them. But then how practical is it? No, it how means that Maina, let me okay. finish. How practical is it? Because um, we have had the constitution having very good um, ideas and things that should be put in, in place and structures and stuff. We don't see them implemented. So are we running with the idea because this idea will make this leader popular or or are, are we running with an idea because it's indeed practical? Okay. And the question is, Ram, mm. what has he done so far? Uh, or, or what the, the UDA, what, what has UDA done so far to help us see that indeed the bottom-up economy um, thing will work? What have they done so far? Or is it just an ideology for them to wait until they are, you know, in position of power? Then, Nikama laptop story, we were told. We were told, <laughs> wait, we, when we get into the city, we, people will have laptops. Uh, when we, we, we get into power, we will do this. We are so used to, you know, feel good things. But then how practical is it? Then we will have leaders uh, making uh, excuses I'll, I'll later. I'll have to wrap it up, uh, <laughs> this conversation. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm giving each one of you a minute yes. to have a final word yes. in regards to this whole conversation, youth and politics. Yeah. What is the, um, your w take home to those who are watching you today, uh, just in 30 seconds each? Uh, Ram, uh, my take home for the youth in our country is that uh, we need to put our stakes high. We need to demand better from uh, political leaders. We need to change the conversation from politics, power sharing, to economic conversation. This country uh, the current leaders are going to bequeath it uh, to bequeath it to us, and uh, as they be before they bequeath it, we need to demand high from them, and that is the prospects of our economy, job creation, uh, wealth creation, affordable health care, affordable health, uh, housing, access to quality education. Those are the kind of uh, promises or the kind of uh, conversation we should be hosting in our country. All right. The, as we head to 2022, uh, I would urge youths to actively participate in politics and elective politics and they should not be on the periphery being errand boys or being engaged in uh, uh, negative po politics of our country. I urge youths of our country let us go for elective pos positions, let us influence the political direction that our country takes uh, and it should be on the economic agenda of our country. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Emma, coming to you. 30 seconds. You, you, you take them to the, to the Kenyan youth in regards to this conversation on leadership. Okay. So my, my last sentiment is this. Youth, let us not talk. Let us take action. Let us start doing what we have been having conversations on. We need to leave the talk and we need to, to live by example first. And we also need to be very conscious about the leaders we elect. Let's elect leaders with integrity. Let's try and change our mindsets. We are the future of the nation and the back lies with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. The back lies with us. Yes. Youths need to uh, is they, 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 they need to be open minded they yes. need to, 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 to come out. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been a pleasure. We should have this conversation again. Yes. Yeah, interesting. Make it frequent. Especially the bottom up economy yes. <laughs> the, the and the trickle down whichever uh, version that uh, suits 
uh, Kenyans, so you need to talk about that. Yes, I'm yeah. most available for that yeah. conversation. Huh? Thank yeah. you so much, uh, Maina. I was with Maina Karobia and Emma Mungute, who, is, uh, who are both youth leaders uh, uh, holding different capacities in different fora. It has been why in the morning youth and politics. Thank you for so much for being part of this conversation. We have more in store for you coming up in a bit. This is why in the morning. My name is Ram Maguko. Keep engaging with us. Keep it Y254.